Hello world, I know I haven't been on here lately. I just finished writing my 800 page memoir, go buy it. I'm also working on my German a lot lately, so if you have any German movies to recommend, do it. There's a lot of them, classic ones that I have not seen, like Das Boat and Downfall. Tell me which ones to watch. So recently, first I watched The Lives of Others, which if you just Google best German movies, it's one of the ones that comes up. It has like a um, 8.4 IMDb rating and it's like number 59 in the top 250 movies. So I had high expectations and they were ultimately dashed. This movie's overrated, cheesy, and barely worth watching once. And I'm gonna use the word, my least favorite word, poignant, which I don't like because it's, it almost implies this, this fascist attitude that you have to have a certain reaction to art. And I don't think that art should be like that. I think it should be, you know, you feel how you want about it. Also, even though this came out in 2006, it feels like it was made in the 80s when it takes place. And the story is basically it's uh, in East Germany during this, this really 1984-ish uh, state of things. <laughs> Literally in 1984. I don't know what year it takes place. Somewhere in the 80s. And it's just like, uh, I think the reason I don't like it in dramas in general in the 1980s is because for me, the 1980s is like the great, or one of the great eras anyways, of comedy. So I don't think of a lot of drama that works in that era. Next, I watched this really old-timey movie, M, which has Peter Lorre, Peter, how do you say his name? Peter Lorre or Peter Lorre? That guy. The, the guy from, you know, Maltese Falcon. He's like, oh, Mr. Spade, that guy. He's, but he speaks German in this movie, in M. And he plays a child serial killer. It may sound like a comedy, but it's actually a drama. I like this movie a lot more. It was directed by uh, Fritz Lang, who I, I know, and you probably know, movies like Metropolis, a lot of other dramas and um, things that were uh, silent. <laughs> so I think this may be the first Fritz Lang movie with sound that I've seen, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But I think I appreciated this movie more when I was finished with it than when I was actually watching it. It's like, I see why people like this in terms of rewatching it, because first time I was just like, who are the characters in this? There's barely any characters except Peter Lorre's, um the main character, and then there's like, everything else is incidental to that. It's kind of maybe Kafka-esque or something in that, in that sense. I think that's the most fascinating part about the movie is how uh, the character this child serial killer emerges because he's the first, I think he doesn't even show up until 15 minutes in. And when he does, unless you know who Peter Laurie is, and I think at the time, a lot of people probably didn't know that he was the killer. It's not made clear at all. It's just, he's shown in the scene. It's one of the great, I think one of the great mirror scenes in movies in which he's just looking in this mirror at himself. I don't know if he's listening to the radio or something, but there's a voiceover, and uh, maybe I'll show it right here. Ein Ausdruck von Schauspielerei, die nach außen hin die Form der Indolenz, ja der Trägheit wählen kann. Im ganzen Schriftbild liegt ein schwer erweisbarer, aber intensiv fühlbarer Zug von Wahnsinn. Isn't that cool? I gotta recreate that in some future video. And then slowly throughout the movie we get more and more of his characters until the end, like we just get this full, uh, I won't reveal the ending of course, but uh, it's just um, by the end you, you just see so much more of him than was there. And the revelation of his character is really what the movie's about. I think I was also trying to imagine at the time how this movie was perceived because it feels, when I think about other movies that came out in 1931, this movie feels so much more modern in its structure and technique, certainly. Finally, I watched something that I hardly ever watch, is a, a full-length nature documentary called Tagbook Einer Biene, which is about bees, and it's told in the first person, like, like the bees are narrating what they're doing, like humans pretending to be bees. Like I said, I haven't seen a nature documentary in a dog's age. And I think even, you know, making poorly filmed YouTube videos as I do, I'm, I'm much more aware of film and also working with audio now. Like both of them, when I see other people do it, it's, uh, I'm, I, I see a lot of 
a lot of it looks way more mediocre now. And I, whenever I hear theme music in movies, I'm just like, you're trying to make me feel a certain way, and I don't like that. And um, so when I see something that's done really well, and in this movie, some of the cinematography just blew me away. Like, I, I, I must, I always try and figure out how they did that. And with this stuff, like in this movie, they like have cameras in the hive and all kinds of things going on. They must use like robots and drones or something. But um, it was incredible foot footage, and uh, yeah, I was blown away. Speaking of naturey stuff. I have a book recommendation of, of something I just finished listening to, audiobook of Ed Young's newish book, uh, An Immense World, which makes hay of the idea that human men mental minds could be put into an animal. It's, you realize just how ridiculous that is and what a, a diluted fiction, but still I enjoyed it, the, the B-movie, but yeah, after after listening to that book, you watch the B-movie and you'll see it totally differently. I highly recommend that book. I think I enjoyed it more than Ed Young's first book, which was called I Contain Mult Multitudes, in which I sort of reviewed, I think, years and years ago, but who cares? Anyway, that's all for now. Bye.